dragging behind When I'm in the wind Will I get anything Through the muck and the fog My hog This is a 1936 ULH. It has an 80 cubic inch high compression flathead V-twin engine. This is still the largest available engine. It was the last year with the total loss oiling system. The 37 had an oil pump. It has the Art Deco Eagle Tank logo. The speedometer is mounted on the tank and we follow the cable down to an enclosed gear. The transmission unit with bicycle kicker pedal. The rear brake pedal. The ride control friction dampener, which changed the tension on the front end for a softer or harder ride. As the depression eased, production increased, and in 1937, sales reached over 11,000. This is a 1938 WLD 45 cubic inch highest compression sports solo V-twin. Externally mounted distributor. Foot brake and footboard. Fishtail exhaust. The drive chain is on the opposite side to the 74, but the same side as the Sportster. Sprung seat. Deco tank. Speedometer mounted on a tank dash. Tension adjustment. Front fender light. And it also has more chrome on it. This beautifully restored 1938 motorcycle is at the Bartels Harley Davidson dealership in Los Angeles, California. Harley-Davidson owners are devoted to their machines like nobody else. Any given Saturday, they'll stop by their local dealership, and any Sunday the weather's nice, they'll be out riding. Not because they have to get somewhere, but for the pleasure of the ride. They've got the fever. This 1940 EL 61 cubic inch overhead valve knucklehead was restored at Moroni's Harley Davidson dealership in Newburgh, New York. You had the option of 16 inch or 18 inch wheels. This has 18 inch, which handled better on the bumpier roads back then. It was the first year of the kidney shaped toolbox, which lasted up until the mid 50s. The 1940 thinned the timing cover and went to heavier flywheels in the engine to make it run smoother and different porting in the heads. Nineteen forty was the only year for the small round air cleaner which had been an option in the late thirties. It was the first year for the metal tank emblem and the only year without sergeant stripes which ran front to back on the tank. The shifter lever. The speedometer mounted on a dash between the two gas tank caps. This was the first year for the oval running boards, which were standard until 1965. Notice the Harley Davidson Motor Company badge emblem on the oil tank. Harley-Davidson's engine design and performance from the knucklehead on created state-of-the-art machines due to input given by famous racer Joe Petralli. In 1936, Joe Petralli set the land speed record of 136.183 miles per hour on the sands of Daytona Beach riding this streamlined motorcycle 
powered by a 61 cubic inch overhead valve engine. Amazingly, that record still remains unbroken. In the 1930s, The Whispering Shadow was a popular serial. In this episode, the hero, on a Harley, races as fast as he can to warn his friends of an ambush. His friends think he's a robber until they see it's him. Pull up there. Don't shoot it, Jack! The 1941 FL was equipped with a super-powered overhead valve, 74 cubic inch engine, and centrifugal oil pump. The adjustment for the Springer tension is below rather than above the Springer. Double loop straight leg frame. Manual advance and retard mechanism on the handlebars. The left hand controlled the spark advance and retard, and the right hand controlled the throttle. This tank has the metal stripes running front to back of the gas tank. This was the first year that the front brake lever was made of aluminum. The speedometer face changed from white to black and silver, which remained standard until 1948. A rare bike of the 1940s, a 1941 WLDR 45 cubic inch flathead. It had the cylinders and heads off a of WR, the bigger intake and bigger M3 carburetor, and a standard 45 bottom end. It was designed for competition, but was street legal. Looking at the heads, it almost looks like a 74 or 80 cubic inch flathead. Straight pipes were added back then for performance. You'd ride them to the races, tape up the lights to race them, and then ride them home. On a 45, half the tank was gas and half was oil. The WDLR had larger capacity tanks for running longer endurance events where gas stops would be difficult. This bike illustrates Harley-Davidson's design philosophy. You can see how similar today's heritage looks to this earlier classic. Servi cars had begun in 1932 and were made up until 1974. This is a handbook for a 1966 Servi car. This is a 1941 Servi car. 